So we will start with the 2D extractor project. So click here in Q3D, 2D extractor. In this case, we're going to design a differential microstrip. And we want to make sure that we create a variable to control the distance between the two traces. I'm going to close this. So the first thing I'm going to do is to design a trace. So I'm going to click here on draw rectangle and from the center, I'm going to draw something like this. So when you click on create rectangle, you have the position and you have the size on X and Y. So here in the position, I'm going to change the X to a variable called separation divided by two. So this is going to be a variable, separation is going to be a variable to control the separation of the two traces. I'm going to put 0 0.2 millimeters, okay? Um, on the X size, you, you can specify the width of the trace, 0 0.8 in this case, and 0 0.035 millimeters, um, 0 0.1 or 0 0.2, okay? So you have here the the trace. It's uh, copper. Um, you can click on rectangle and click in here. It's gonna display material appearance. So it's gonna be uh, like copper. So if you click on this rectangle in here, um, you can name it, um, you know, net A, for example. You can right click, go to edit, duplicate, mirror. And then you click again in the center and to the left. So now you have net A under line one. I'm gonna rename this to net B. So you have two nets, right? If you click here in 2D extractor design, you can change the separation. This is 0 0.2, I'm gonna change to 0 0.1. You see that the separation between these two traces changes. So I'm gonna design the dielectric now. So I'm gonna click here on draw rectangle and I'm gonna find something like this. You can always uh, change the name. I'm going to select this uh, dielectric. The material I'm going to click and go to edit. I'm going to type FR4. So this is my FR4. And click OK. And uh, here we have the dielectric. Again, you can create variables to control the thickness, um, spacing, and, and so on. So I'm not going to create any variables to control the dielectric. I'm going to create the ground plane in here. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to material appearance. It's already copper by default. I'm going to type G and D. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, this is interesting. You can click here. Uh, what I'm going to do is create an air box. So I'm going to click here and create an, a box like this and change the material to vacuum material appearance as well. Okay, here we have our um, setup. Uh, on ground, I'm gonna right click and go to assign conductor, reference ground, and we're gonna solve on boundary, okay? Um, in this case, here I'm gonna right click, assign conductor, signal line is gonna be net B, solve on boundary, and here, assign conductor, signal line, solvent boundary, and that's A. So basically, you have uh, the ground, that's A, and net B. And this is going to be the cross-section of my um, differential transmission line. So you right-click on analysis, go to add um, solution setup. You can specify the solution frequency, let's say 10 gigahertz. OK, and then you right-click on setup one add frequent sweep, and we already have some points in here. We can uh, leave this as default or even create a few more points, let's say 15 in here and 20 in here, and change from discrete to interpolating. Okay, you're gonna save this. I'm gonna save this uh, somewhere in here. I'm going to simulation, validate, and I'm going to analyze all. Once you have your simulation done, you can do many things. You can right click on results and go to create matrix report rectangular plot. 
And let's plot first uh, the resistance of the net A as a function of frequency. You click new report, you see that the resistance increases as a function of frequency because of the skin depth, right? You click on L matrix, you add trace, and then uh, you see something like this. So you might want to see this plot in the log scale. So you just click here on the X axis, change the scaling uh, from linear to log just so you can see how the inductance and the resistance changes. You can also plot the fields. Um, you can select everything and right click, plot CG fields, electric field, for example, vector E. So you have the, the electric field vectors from this net to this net. And, and these are controlling here on field overlays. You right click on the field overlays you go to edit sources, you can specify the voltage of each one of these nets and the current. So I'm going to right click on vector one and I'm going to click on plot visibility. I'm going to select everything again and plot RL fields now. Uh, you can plot magnetic fields. I want to plot the flux lines. So you have the flux lines in here. Okay. Uh, if you double click in here, you can change the scale and number of divisions. Let's say 99. So you have uh, way more lines and you can change the distance and you can change um, you know the, the the layout in here so you can get the results so what I'm gonna do this is 0 0.1 right we can do 0 0.05 up to 0 0.15 right and see uh, how those values change so what we want to do now is simulate from uh, separation from 0 0.1 up to 0 0.4 but instead of manually keep changing the those values in here what you can do is right click in optometrix add parametric and here you're going to click add and you're going to choose the variable we only have one separation we'll start with the we'll start with 0 0.1 up to 0 0.4 with the 0 0.1 um, step you click add okay if you want to go to table uh, you're gonna see the four variations right the only thing you have to do now is right click in here parametric setup setup analyze okay now that we have all of these four variations you can right click in results again create matrix report rectangular plot uh, one thing you can do is put plot the capacitance between those two traces, right? But instead of as a function of frequency, I want to go here to families and click these three dots and use all values. I want to plot the capacitance between those two traces for those uh, these four uh, separations. Um, instead of frequency, we want to have a sweep on separation. If you click new report, you're going to see the capacitance uh, changing as a function of the distance. So with that, uh, you can actually apply signals to one conductor and see the crosstalk on the other. For that, we're going to go to Project, Insert Circuit Design. You can just hit OK, and now you're going to see that we have a circuit schematic. You can click on this 2D extractor design, click and drag to circuit 1 and drop. This will bring um, our model that we just simulated in here. Note that we have a few things that we can change. Since we're simulating the cross-section, we can give a specific length uh, to the model, let's say one centimeter. And the separation in here is a, a variable, right? I mean, we're going to extract and use the RLCs uh, based on this separation, 0 0.1. What we can do is create another variable in here to control that variable. So let's con create a variable called dist. Uh, it's going to be 0 0.1. Okay. Now, what we can do, um, you can uh, add grounds in here. So click on the ground, add the ground on the uh, references. I'm going to apply uh, a source and termination in here. So I want to add like two grounds in here. OK. Uh, now, let's do some thing. Let's add terminations, resistors on each one of these ends. So in here, in here uh, and in here. I can just drag in here. So I want to connect one ground in here, another ground in here. Make sure they're not shorted, uh, even though it doesn't matter, right? 
um, this one I'm gonna bring it uh, here and what I want to do is name all of these wires so I can understand uh, the waveform where they are just like when you're gonna probe uh, a scope um, you you need to know where you're gonna measure right so this is not a out I'm gonna just write down not a out same thing in here but now it's net B net underline B out that's the output uh, this is net B in so it's gonna be net underline underline in uh, I'm gonna just create a wire here double click and uh, net underline a underline in and I'm gonna create a source so net a is gonna be the aggressor uh, net B you see is gonna be the victim we only have terminations in there you need to go to independent sources and I'm just gonna select one uh, the uh, clock with jitter I'm gonna add it here press ask and connecting here uh, you can click and change the values in here or double click and then you see the description of each one of these fields this is going to be a clock signal with the one volt of amplitude the rise time is going to be 0.1 nanoseconds the same as the fall time the pulse width is going to be 0.8 nanoseconds and the period is going to be 2 nanoseconds that's what I'm creating here right now just click OK um, okay that's it you right click on under analysis add next scene solution setup transient analysis let's uh, simulate this for seven nanoseconds and okay you expand there's this next scene transient and right click analyze this should take just a second um, to see the results you right click on the results create standard report rectangular plot and you select all of these nets that you just rename it right click on new report and you're gonna see so this is not in so this is what's coming out of the source this is what's getting to the other end you see the the delay due to the length and this is the crosstalk right uh, near end and far end crosstalk note that we're simulating this for 0 0.1 millimeter you can pretty much do the same thing that we did here in 2d extractor design if you want to run a parametric analysis you right click on optimetrics add parametric and you add the dist uh, which is our variable from 0 0.1 to 0 0.4 with a step 0 0.1 millimeter click add ok ok and you right click uh, oops on optometrics right click in parametric setup analyze so if you look here down on the bottom we're gonna solve all these variations the results are changing in here right but what if I want to plot all of the results at the same time uh, let's plot the uh, near end crosstalk. So, uh, well, you, you can select all of them if you want to. Go to families and dist, you select all of them, and then you click new report. So, you're seeing that uh, the signal in here and the, the output, they virtually they, they don't change, right? I mean, but the near end crosstalk and far end crosstalk they change right if you have a, a distance of 0 0.1 you have a, a higher uh, crosstalk um, 